Hello everyone, my name is Mark Janish. This is the From the Bench podcast. Uh, this is a rebranded podcast, formerly AMG Nightly. I uh, want to go over some things with you tonight regarding uh, some new uh, <clears throat> podcast platforms. I am now on Lipson and uh, will be reestablished hopefully very soon with the next five business days with uh, Stitcher. Put a test broadcast up, which was actually... My last podcast, August 30th, uh, up there, and it looks like, uh, hopefully, uh, with my fingers and toes crossed here, uh, we'll be able to go ahead and uh, rebrand the podcast. This is uh, From the Bench. I'm your host, Mark Janish. This is a nightly podcast of commentary scores and uh, my thoughts on uh, sports. Essentially, uh, you're asking who Mark Janish is. Well, uh, Mark Janish, uh, seven years ago, started a uh, small one-page Google blog, okay? One-page sports blog that was great at the time, and then um, attempting to uh, get a website up. Uh, Access Media Global was founded, and he's gone through many changes, some of which are right are happening as we speak tonight, uh, but we'll get to that in just a couple moments. Uh, what I'd like to do, first of all, however, is uh, continue to uh, mention, obviously, the tragedy of epic proportions in Houston, Texas, and surrounding areas of the Lone Star State. Uh, <clears throat> our prayers are with you. And uh, as I said uh, a couple of days ago now, because I didn't do a podcast last night, um, I would encourage the faith community, that is, uh, those of faith, to um, give what they can, help how they can, uh, whether it be materially or otherwise, food, clothing, water, shelter, or whatever you can do uh, to uh, ease some of the uh, long-term uh, pressures of uh, the folks of the Uh, who have been victimized by this flood in Houston. And I would encourage any of you to give to your mosque, your synagogue, or your church. Um, And keep in mind, uh, there's organizations like Salvation Army, the Red Cross. Uh, The one thing that I would say uh, that you would probably want to think about is the fact that uh, a lot of the administrative costs are sunk into those uh, that money as well, but you want to do what you can do. You can't do everything, but I believe you can do something. And I have reached out uh, to some contacts in that area so I can do something myself because I'm not going to ask you as my audience to do something that uh, I wouldn't do myself. It's just not fair. Uh, so uh, prayers up uh, <clears throat> and thoughts to the folks uh, victimized by the uh, horrific floods in uh, Houston at this particular point. And uh, it will be okay, but it's going to be quite some time. Even after the cameras leave, there will still be needs. And we want to make sure that those that can will and uh, <clears throat> help as much as they can. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing some good stories out of Houston I don't know when that'll be um, as recovery goes forward. Um, And so we'll see. Anyway, I want to get to some scores tonight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you some, uh, before I get to some afternoon baseball in the Major League Baseball uh, leagues in the United States, I'm going to do some WNBA scores. I want to present those to you. We're going to bring those up here right now. And we're going to talk a little... uh, uh, scores and this is generally this podcast. Uh, the reason I do this late night podcast is one, I don't have a real time scoreboard, which I really wish I did, but I don't right now. Uh, Minnesota 80, the Indiana Fever 69, that's the final in the WNBA tonight. The Dallas Wings 99, the Chicago Sky 96, uh, that's a final. So we're going to uh, go forward now with that. And we're going to get you some MLB scores. Uh, some things have gone on tonight that that um, <clears throat> have been a little bit uh, distressing in relation to the wild card. But we're going to go ahead 
and we're going to um, make sure that we give you all the MLB scores. That'll be coming up here in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to go over some website issues here as well. Uh, but uh, turning to the MLB right now, we have uh, Atlanta 9, Philadelphia 1, and some afternoon baseball to see this afternoon. The Cleveland Indians, the American League champions 2, the New York Yankees 1. They're leading the wild card race, coming in at two and a half games. You can see um, the um, post as uh, post up on accessmediaglobal.com. You go to the baseball page, you're going to see some uh, wild card information up there. I'll have the new uh, updated standings up tomorrow and uh, tomorrow morning, probably here on the west coast of the United States. So Milwaukee six, St. Louis five. Uh, that's a final, and the Seattle Mariners continue their slide. They've used uh, something on the order of about 37 pitchers this year, and uh, Iwakuma, Hernandez, Paxton have all been on the disabled list, and uh, unfortunately Scott Service uh, um, is running out of time and running out of baseball games to uh, see the Mariners move. Uh, they have actually plummeted to three games out going into tonight's action uh, in the wild card race, and um, – that's going to be a problem. They have acquired starting pitcher Mike Leak from the Cardinals in exchange for cash con cash con cash considerations. Say that ten times fast and see how that works out. Uh, yes, cash considerations and um, some slotting ability in the internet and the pursuit of international players. The collective bargaining agreement uh, dictates that uh, um, opportunities to acquire. Uh, International players is out there, and the Mariners actually got themselves a slot with that particular trade. Baltimore eight, uh, Seattle seven. Baltimore has won seven in a row, is making and is making uh, quite a charge for that second wild card spot to have that playing game, uh, playing playoff game with the New York Yankees. Detroit six, Colorado two. The Braves and the Phillies, uh, Atlanta five, Philadelphia two. Now. Uh, that's a final. Uh, looks like that was a double header, uh, washed out because of rain yesterday. Uh, so um, Washington five, uh, four, Miami nothing. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton holding at 51 home runs tonight. Uh, Cleveland and New York in the second game of a double header. Cleveland nine, New York four. Uh, Texas and Houston. This game was played in St. Petersburg, Florida, due to Hurricane uh, Harvey, now Tropical Storm Harvey. Texas 8, Houston 1. That's a final. Uh, Boston 7, Toronto 1. That's a final. The New York Mets and the Cincinnati Reds played this evening. New York 2, the Cincinnati Reds nothing. And uh, Pittsburgh uh, got outscored by the Chicago Cubs by two touchdowns. It was Chicago 17, Pittsburgh 3. That was a final. And the front-running Minnesota Twins managed by Paul Molitor. Minnesota 11, Chicago 1. Uh, it's ironic here that the Twins, uh, I'm not going to say they gave up on a possible playoff spot, but they traded some guys away. But right now they're in the thick of a uh, of the wild card race holding that uh, second slot right now, even if it is by a mere uh, half of a game. Uh, Minnesota 11, Chicago 1. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays and the Kansas City Royals played this evening. Danny Duffy, I have a story on the website. Go to the baseball page. Uh, former Lompoc Cabrillo High star Danny Duffy um, ha got arrested for DUI. And there's a statement by... Um, the owner of the uh, Kansas City Royals, um, um, <clears throat> I believe it's Dayton Ford. I might have that wrong, but it's actually on the website. Uh, Dayton Moore tweeted out a statement uh, regarding that, and we wish Danny Duffy the best. However, it reflects poorly on him, especially since he's on the DL um, with an uh, <clears throat> arm problem, among other things. Tampa Bay 5, Kansas City 3. The uh, San Francisco Giants and the San Diego uh, Padres in uh, a game featuring some uh, second division clubs right now. San Diego 5, 
uh, San Francisco nothing in the top of the ninth inning, and uh, the uh, suddenly uh, su suddenly losing prone uh, Los Angeles Dodgers this evening, uh, Arizona six, uh, Los Angeles Dodgers one. The Arizona Diamondbacks, of course, trying to hang on to one of the wild card spots. Uh, they've had an excellent year, but obviously overshadowed by the 91-win Dodgers. The Dodgers, however, look to be going down to defeat unless a miracle uh, comeback happens. Uh, it's now Arizona 6, the Dodgers 1. And then, uh, of course, the Anaheim Angels. Now, uh, there's been speculation regarding Mike Socia. It seems like for the last like five or six years whether he's going to get fired. And, um, you know, he's been with the Angels for 17 years. Former Dodger catcher out of Norristown, Pennsylvania, wearing number 14 for the Dodgers of the uh, uh, late 70s and early 80s. And uh, <clears throat> I think in some way he was related to Tommy Lasorda. I don't know, a nephew, second cousin removed, what have you. Uh, and he's had quite a career. Now, uh, all of a sudden, he has the Angels going into, tonight, in, into tonight's action about one game out of a wild card spot. Once again, you can go to the baseball page and you can check the wild card standings post that I posted for August 30th, 2017. I'll have the updated standings tomorrow. Uh, right now, Oakland 8, the Angels 5 in the top of the sixth inning. Actually, uh, this game was on local television and I happened to uh, change uh, uh, some uh, television channels just to check to see what the score was. And uh, in the fifth inning, they were down eight to three. So once again, the Angels making noise in the wild card race, about a game out uh, behind uh, Minnesota and two and a half behind the Yankees uh, related to tonight's action. So that uh, concludes the baseball portion of the uh, circumstances tonight. I'm going to go ahead and just give you in the U.S. Open, and uh, I believe it's flushing. Uh, Flushing, New York. I uh, want to give you the winners tonight on both the men's and women's side here in just a moment. Louis Armstrong Stadium in New York, the U.S. Open. John Eisner won today. Marin Cilic, who had an excellent Wimbledon, by the way. Um, Borna Koric. And Dominique Thane. Also won. On the women's side, uh, Maria Sharapova. Now, she got in as a wild card. She's coming off a 15-month suspension for the use of some illegal substances. She got her um, her uh, suspension. But she's actually made the most of this opportunity uh, here at the U.S. Open. Maria Sharapova won today. Uh, and we're going to see also Venus Williams uh, is in the third set against Car Caroline Wozniacki. That on ESPN2, by the way, in the United States. Uh, Elena Spit Spitalina won today. And uh, that concludes uh, this portion of the program as far as the uh, U.S. Open tennis, the Major League Baseball, and some WNBA. Now, uh, another uh, area that I wanted to discuss with you all is some NBA stuff. Uh, there's been speculation regarding the health of Isaiah Thomas, former University of Washington star under Lorenzo Romar, uh, for quite some time. He, of course, uh, needing to uh, and, and uh, desiring a big max contract, but uh, he uh, has been uh, conditionally traded uh, the Cavaliers asked because of Isaiah Thomas's uh, poor uh, health and not knowing, and that's the point I wanted to make here, is that nobody knows what Isaiah Thomas's hip is doing. Um, we don't know uh, if he's going to be the same player. So what the uh, Cavaliers did is they had to go ahead and ask uh, – Boston for another <clears throat> asset, which turns out is uh, Sports Center ESPN Sports Center is reporting by a Twitter 
tonight that it'll be a second round draft pick in 2020. So can we just put this drama to rest? Uh, hopefully Isaiah Thomas will be healthy. That's the best we can hope. Uh, hopefully you'll have a good year. It looks like, uh, you know, per the collective, bar collective bargaining agreement, a lot of these guys, due to the new TV money that's flowing in for the next few years, uh, went to the max contract or got um, a one-year contract, and then they're going to try and see whether they have um, can can uh, just uh, have faith in their abilities and work for that max contract. Uh, one of those being Chris Paul, who's now left Los Angeles for Houston. So uh, my point, my point is, is that Isaiah Thomas, uh, if he is half the player that he is, I mean, I would take Isaiah Thomas at 75, 80% over many of the guards in the NBA. Do I believe he's top, uh, top 15? Uh, he's probably at about 12 or 13 right now. Um, and, and it's through no fault of his own. He's just a short guy. Kyrie Irving, however, is to me uh, an up-and-coming closer. And as we've seen, he is a scorer, but he wants to be the man in uh, somewhere. So we'll see what Kyrie Irving chooses to do. Uh, and then, of course, uh, he's going to be in Boston. And, of course, Isaiah will be migrating to Cleveland to play with LeBron James, who suddenly has become a not desired commodity. Now, I don't even know if that's Dan Gilbert's fault, because to be honest with you, LeBron already accomplished what he came to Cleveland for. He's looking to probably opt out. I believe he will because uh, to save his brand and because of the handlers that he has, Rich Paul and his agents and so forth. Uh, he's probably going to leave Cleveland because uh, Dan Gilbert uh, has signed some checks, but it seems like uh, the Eastern Conference champions are in decline. Now, I'm not sure that Gordon Hayward and Isaiah Thomas are the complete answer for uh, Boston, but I will say this, and I've said this before, uh, Danny Ainge has been stockpiling draft picks like nobody's business in Boston, so he's going to have some replacements uh beyond next year. But it'll be interesting uh, because there are guys, uh, major guys like the Durants of the world, who can opt out of their contracts and become free agents. Russell Westbrook, I believe, is on that list. So uh, that's what we can look forward to as far as the NBA goes. <clears throat> and uh, one of the things I wanted to do is let you know, like tomorrow night, tomorrow night's going to be a busy night. Uh, Preseason games galore, and uh, with my website, which I own, and the content is controlled exclusively by me at this time, accessmediaglobal.com. I was busy on site today, and uh, we do have uh, some coverage. I said we would be covering four teams uh, for the um, upcoming NFL season. And fortune, I'm, I'm kind of one of those guys that's been fortunate to find content, okay? Uh, and I will uh, get to that in a moment. But I did want to say, for those of you that don't know uh, who I am and what I'm about, seven years ago, I didn't, I didn't have uh, a job. Fortunately, I'm employed now. But at the time, I, I didn't have a job and always wanted to do broadcasting. No one would give me a shot. Now, that could be due to um, <clears throat> my less than electric and uh, somewhat acerbic personality, because I've been known to stir, stir the pot, so to speak, and, uh, you know, uh, not leave things alone. But um, the bottom line is, is that I've always, want, always wanted to broadcast sports, could never play sports due to a physical disability. But what I decided to do in 2010, very prayerfully, I established uh, uh, the Google site, and I, I wanted to do broadcasting because no one would give me a shot. So I had to create my own opportunity, and this happens to be it. Um, that's not to say that uh, I couldn't be doing other things because um, 
Uh, I do do other things other than this. Many of you have this impression that uh, social media and sports journalism in the 21st century is uh, easy. It's not. I don't have a staff of 20, so uh, I spend a lot of time. I take a lot of consideration of what I present. Uh, hopefully, this is the flagship program, the From the Bench podcast. Uh, what I've done right now is um, I'm waiting on um, some things. Uh, uh, the AMG podcast nightly is going to be no more. Uh, 43 uh, editions of that podcast. We're rebranding everything. Uh, I have a new provider, Lipson uh, Podcast Hosting. Uh, also have the site, accessmediaglobal.com. You're going to see some things that away uh, very shortly. What I'd like to do right now is just we're going to go to the site really quickly here. And uh, I'm going to just let you know what's up and what's up and what you can view. Uh, Thursday night, uh, as I said, we're going to be looking at some serious uh, football game number like four or five if you're uh, in the situation Uh, that the Dallas Cowboys are in, for example, who played five preseason games as opposed to the standard four. I wish, and my, my hope, is that they cut down that, that down to two preseason games. Uh, but rosters do need to get down to 53. So tomorrow uh, night, 4 o'clock. Four o'clock. The Sandy, uh, sorry, the Los Angeles Rams are going to be playing the Green Bay Packers. Now, Jared Goff, he was like five of six for like thirty-four yards. Had a terrible step back uh, his last game, and uh, Sean Mannion almost brought the Rams back from uh, a deficit of twenty-one. They spotted the Chargers twenty-one points, and uh, at this particular point. Right now, we'll see what uh, Sean McVay chooses to do, the 31-year-old newly minted coach of the Rams, late of the um, Washington Redskins as far as being an OC, offensive coordinator. Um, hopefully, the offense will be moving. I want to see some Sammy Watkins work. Uh, Aaron Donald, uh, that's... A little bit. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to refer you to some podcasts here and some articles. The first article I want you to go, if you went to the latest news page, uh, just on what, what I recently posted, Jermaine Curse and Trade Talk, Bob Candota had a good article on that. Um, I'm not sure that the uh, Seahawks can trade Jermaine Curse. Uh, he was very productive. Uh, unless... You know, if I had my druthers, they'd be trading some pieces that they have for some offensive linemen because the offensive line has been terrible. Uh, Russell Wilson uh, needs to not be on the ground. He was injured a couple of different ways last year. And um, with the loss of uh, George Fant due to injury, a former Western Kentucky Hilltopper basketball player, uh, from uh, 2011 to 2014, uh, I think, I mean, the Seahawks appear not to have that as a priority, but uh, maybe Jermaine Curse can be acquired for a couple of pieces, maybe a couple draft picks down the line. Uh, in the next uh, column, just slide over. We slide over and we mouse over uh, these things. We have the Los Angeles Chargers podcast. Now, here's here's the deal. Uh, with the Chargers. It's kind of funny because in the battle for Los Angeles, that's like the big uh, promotional uh, commercial uh, situation that's going in Los Angeles because, of course, uh, they're competing with the Los Angeles Rams to fill StubHub Arena uh, where in Carson, California, where the LA Galaxy play. Uh, the Los Angeles Chargers podcast for today um, <clears throat> is up. And right next to that, you mouse over the Seahawk logo. And there's also the Seahawkers podcast. Well, look at the 53-man uh, roster projected by one Bob Candota. 
um, this evening. Uh, so I posted like four podcasts. The Oakland Raiders podcast, I was able to find a new content piece uh, that's going to do really, really well for me on Twitter today. And uh, the Oakland Raiders podcast, uh, they're going to be playing uh, the San Francisco 49ers, who really I don't care about. I'm sick of them, okay? Um, I don't care because in the uh, this area of Southern California, uh, for the last four or five years prior to the Rams and the Chargers arrival, uh, Rams last year and, of course, Chargers additional this year, I'm, I'm thanking the football gods that I don't have to watch uh, Kyle Shanahan and the crying John Lynch, uh, rookie GM, uh, barely out of his jock strap. They give him a job. And, uh, I mean, the 49ers are just terrible. They've been terrible since uh, Jim Harbaugh left to uh, go to Michigan. And as they say, the rest is history. Next to that, uh, here's a podcast that will be prominently featured this season. The Rams prodca- podcast, The Fearsome Tusa, with Gary Klein and Lindsay Thierry. Now, some of you in the Pacific Northwest, if you're listening, uh, she did some stand-up television stuff uh, with Root Sports, I believe. Uh, Root Sports Northwest. Uh, they're the uh, regional sports network. There we go. Um, and, uh, they came out with a podcast about an hour. So just talking Rams, Aaron Donald situation. They expect him to be, be back by game one. Cause basically he's not making a lot of money and getting fined for the situation. And then of course, uh, the Seattle Seahawks. Um, I have another post, uh, related to the Seahawks. Five questions Seattle must address in the final preseason game. So those are some things that uh, we can look to. I wanted to go to the uh, Major League Baseball page and just let you know, Paul Francis Sullivan, Soli Sullivan, uh, does a podcast for baseball, posted a couple of those. And then uh, seeing as how this wild card race needs to be uh, tracked, One of my favorite sites that you'll see, it'll say Mark's Favorites MLB site. Buster only, a nice picture there. The last two podcasts are up. Um, And then there's a little nice little flashback article um, regarding the 1967 Red Sox and Carl Yastrzemski, outfielder, first baseman. Um, He played till 1983 uh, when I was a... uh, a teenager, uh, I think a, a junior in high school at the time he retired. Um, there's a nice little flashback article picture of Peter Gammons there. You, uh, you're going to want to look at that if you're a Boston Red Sox fan. And then, of course, the smiling Buster Only. And then, of course, I mentioned Danny Duffy being uh, uh, um, in the DUI uh, situation. Uh, former Lompoc pitching star Danny Duffy that I mentioned. Uh, is arrested for DUI. Then you have, uh, as little uh, content placeholders right now, uh, the Twitter feeds, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, the Seattle Mariners, and the San Diego Padres, because I essentially told the audience uh, at that particular point that I would be covering all those four teams. And then, of course, uh, we're looking for, an. Uh, I mentioned an aggregator. Um, the aggregator is going to cover all... Major League Baseball teams will probably put it together on a side panel of this page right here. Um, So looking forward to that and get those placeholders out the way. And then I can go ahead and uh, uh, write to you as I am led to do so. Uh, Other favorite sites, of course, MLB.com, Gammons Daily with the Peter Gammons material. Baseball Tonight with Buster Only, that's the archives. Uh, love that. And then there's the uh, National uh, Baseball League of Japan, of Japan uh, npb.org, uh, and the English language site. You can check that. And then there's the KBO, the, the Korean Baseball Organization. So that's the content of the MLB page. Hopefully you'll enjoy that and uh, 
we're going to put some things together. Uh, my <clears throat> uh, The fine folks of Gold Social Media, led by Gabe Pereira, did contact me today. So we're gonna, I'm going to be sending out an email to hopefully get some of this uh, aggregation stuff and pages finalized so they can uh, be uh, tightened up and looking uh, somewhat spiffy. That's an old word for looking really good. Um, anyway, in the National Basketball Association right now, that page is a little bit empty except to say that we do have the Los Angeles Laker Twitter feed, the Los Angeles Clipper Twitter feed, the Sacramento Kings as well. So those are little placeholders. We hope to do the same thing that we're doing um, as far as layout, where you have the stories that are exclusive to baseball running on the baseball page. Then we'll have the aggregator with the feeds, and then um, uh, the basketball page will be tightened up that way. And um, <clears throat> I have asked my audience uh, multiple times, gotten not a great response here uh, regarding if they would want to submit for content. Submit for content. Let's put it that way. Uh, and I did not get uh, the response that I had desired, but I am going to be consolidating um, some pages. Uh, the on-air page well, probably, I'm thinking, since it does have digital newspapering, uh, the digital newspaper is, is uh, the craze now from um, Arizona down to Washington, D.C., uh, and areas in between. Everything right now is uh, put together by state, but I do have... A consolidation idea that I'll be looking to get done through uh, the web developer here. We're going to develop this page. We're going to make it uh, content worthy, and uh, we'll probably we're going to keep both these elements, but we're going to reposition uh, them, and then hopefully <clears throat> it'll be better for you as the sports consumer that you are. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so at this particular time. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and um, say a very pleasant good evening from the bench. I'm Mark Janish, your host of the revamped and rebranded podcast. You can get a hold of me on Twitter. Mark Janish, M-A-R-K-J-A-N-I-S-C-H. And uh, I will have the Twitter handle here for you in just a moment. It is new. I used to be at W-I-D-E, W-O-R-L-D. O-F-S-P-O-R, and uh, we have rebranded and redone the Twitter account. So the Twitter handle, folks, is going to be Mark Janish, M-A-R-K-J-A-N-I-S-C-H, at capital M-A-R-K, capital A, Access Media. Mark Janish at Mark Access Media, no spaces. You're welcome to join me on Twitter. You're welcome to join me on Lipson. You're welcome to join me on Stitcher for this podcast and any other podcast by date that will be posted. Uh, we want to say thank you to everybody who's supported, everybody who's uh, given, who's prayed, and uh, so forth. I do appreciate it. I uh, had a few setbacks physically this year already in the health, but seem to be somewhat out of the woods in that regard. Uh, once again, I'm Mark Chanish for the Off the Bench Podcast. Have a good evening, everyone, and may God richly bless you. Thanks for listening.